Welcome to episode six of the True You Unfiltered podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Persley, where our podcast is a guide to navigating life's challenges and achieving a holistic well-being. Mm. We offer insights on overcoming obstacles in emotional, spiritual, financial, and physical aspects. We simplify the process of skill development, helping you reach your goals. Additionally, we provide practical advice on balancing life, uh, family life, while pursuing growth in business fitness, and a mental well-being. Join us for valuable tips to enhance various facets of your life's journey with our guest, Marshall Gillen, from a 5X college dropout and broke bartender to an award-winning speak-to-sell coach, international speaker, and founder of toppaidspeaker.com. Marshall's journey is a testament to the power of transformation and resilience. In this episode, Your Mess is Your Message, Turning adversity into advantage, Marshall shares his incredible story and key insights on how embracing your struggles can lead to your guests, or sorry, your greatest strengths. His experience and wisdom will inspire you to view your challenges as opportunities for growth and success. So let's get into it, Marshall. Let's do it. Yo. That's so deep. Thanks for coming on, brother. I appreciate you taking the time to hop on here and really share your message and kind of go into how things yeah. can be not so cool into greatness. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I love it, man. And I just want to say uh, publicly, congratulations, uh, new daddy. Like, uh, that's amazing. Uh, healthy new baby. And so uh, I'm sure you guys are just beyond, uh, beyond yourself. And I don't have to tell you, Kyle, and I'm sure I don't have to tell the people in the audience, like these moments are amazing when they happen. Um, but oftentimes there's these moments in between those great moments, right? When things are super low. Or like the behind the scenes thing when you're struggling with something. And, and that's not really what too many people ever talk about or share on social media. And so I love that you have this podcast. Uh, I love that we have an opportunity to have these conversations. And, and to be honest, not to be cliche, but I'm really stoked for the listeners. And especially for the men. Like this, this, this episode is going to be great for women too. But especially if you're a man, I'm going to share some real and raw stuff with you guys that I'm going through in real time. I want to share with you guys how I've been able to use my stories and my message is to literally transform not only my life, but the lives of people who hear the stories. And like Kyle said, there's nothing special about me. Like I grew up on, I grew up in a farm town in Illinois in the middle of nowhere. I'm a five-time college dropout, which means I was so dumb that I had to go five times to really truly realize it wasn't for me. And um, which is actually a whole different story in and of itself. But, uh, and then, you know, was able to turn my life around, um, attempted suicide, had a best friend who I lost to suicide. And um, that's really what the catalyst became for when God first came into my life at the age of 29 and said, yo, bro, you got to tell your story. You know, I grew up in this farm town, like I said, in the, in the 90s, when men don't really talk about their feelings or the things that they've, they've been through. And so to this podcast episode, especially into what you're creating here, Kyle, like how amazing that we get to have these conversations in real time so other men can tap into these and, and understand that you're not alone. And I hope more than anything that this episode gives you guys permission to understand that one, it's okay to feel these deep, painful, hurtful emotions, but it's not okay to stay there. And if you're listening to this podcast, then you know already that you have a bigger calling on your life, or you wouldn't be here trying to figure out how to better your life in general. And so I just want you to know, it doesn't matter if you're an employee, a manager, an entrepreneur, if you are a man with a family and you just want to serve better and you want to be better, then I hope this this message is for you. But um, yeah, man, that's what we've created. Turn my message into my message, sharing stories. And, uh, Kind of saying and talking about the things, Kyle, that most people don't say and talk about. It's kind of always been my shtick, you know? Yeah. No, I remember, mm-hmm. like, wow. So first and foremost, like, we got connected in on, like, on Facebook. And, you know, there's always different, like, the thing is you have a different message to share with the world. It's not also not also at the same time common but also uncommon because I'm not going to lie, bro. I had a... Uh, I, I'm not even wearing my bracelet today. I'm slacking today, but basically there's a suicide bracelet that's, there's always hope to that. And, mm. um, I remember, so I'm ironically, I'm 28. I'll be 29 in September. Woo-woo. Let's go. <laughs> and, uh, high school was very interesting to me. Um, around junior year of high school. I'm, and by the way, I'm traveling, uh, going overseas to play soccer and missing proms to, to do all these things. Um, to find oh. actually, I, one of my best friends actually did commit suicide and it sent me through a whole loop. I could go on for days about that. And maybe I, I can cover it here with you, but, but, yeah. um, 
hearing you say, you know, it's okay for you to feel and not stay there. I'm telling you, bro, I stayed there for years and it kept me mm -hmm. from my potential. Same. And so Same. like to hear how everything kind of came to be, I mean, I, I ended up going into a, you know, doing marketing, digital marketing online. And then uh, that's how we got connected. I, I just remember, yeah. uh, you know, start networking on social media, send friend requests. And lo and behold, Marshall live. We are live on Facebook <laughs> is on there. Tell everybody yeah. about Marshall lives. These guys, these are legendary. I, I pop in, yeah. I pop in a minute, but I remember seeing yeah. them and you still do them today. And it's awesome. To yeah, hundred percent. So here's the thing. I don't know if anybody on this podcast can relate to this feeling, but have you ever tried something, Kyle? And, um, you found out that in order to do it, you had to be kind of be part of like a club. And then maybe you finally got in the club. And then when you were like in the club, you still didn't fit in at all. I, have you said, I don't know if you've ever experienced anything like that, right? So listeners ever experienced anything like that. And what I mean by that is in 2016, I wanted to become a professional speaker. And so I invested some money in courses and a couple of weekend coaching workshops. And I learned how to become a paid public speaker. Okay. And so I set off into the speaker market and into the speaker circuit. But I found out that in order to really start to book some of the stages that you want to be on and really start to grow a global brand, that you had to kind of be in this club. Like, and to be in the club, you either had to be famous or you had to pay a lot of money. And I'm like, okay, so I'm six months in and I'm starting to understand that speaking circuit is by and large a club of people that is, you know, know each other. Okay, that's cool. Makes sense. Networks are networks. So I go to the best of the best of the best. I'm at the be I'm at, at the voted number one uh, entrepreneur uh, event in the world. And um, they talk about how to make money matter. And so all these entrepreneurs are coming from all, all around the world because they want to understand how to make their money matter, uh, how to give back to cause that, that uh, matter to them. And so I end up at this event and this, this great speaker makes this offer and I pay $25,000 to be in the inner circle. And here I am, I'm in the club. I mean, I'm like with the most famous speakers in the whole world. But kind of I'm telling you, man, like, I don't know if it's just the way that I grew up, like how I am, where I came from, my background, my story. I just never fit into that club. Like, as a matter of fact, like the more vulnerable and the more real and raw that I was, the more alienated I felt in that club. And I'm, and I'm not naming names, but, but like some of the most famous speakers that you guys know, like those are the people that I was learning from, hanging out with and masterminds with, because the guy who facilitated the mastermind is one of those people. And they all speak at his events and vice versa. And so for me, Kyle, it was, it was almost like disheartening. It actually kind of crushed me a little bit. Because the people that I saw online were not the people that I was actually meeting in real life. And as a matter of fact, the more that I wanted to show them the, that I am the version of what they talk about online, the more that they kind of shunned me. And it was like, you are so fake. And so what I started to understand is that the speaker circuit, this club I worked so hard and paid to be in, like I didn't belong in that club. And I wanted so hard to outrun my past that I grew up in this farm town on a pig farm, you know, just this loser, you know, this. This guy divorced, attempted suicide, dropout, dad was a bum, all the Gillens are drunk, alcoholic losers. Like I, want, I, I was so ashamed of that, that I was willing to invest my time, money, and energy to try to get into a different circle. And what I realized, bro, is that God never meant me to be in that circle. God meant me to go to that land and to take the tools and resources that I need, but to come back to my people. And when I say by my people, it's like, dude, I don't know how to say it, but I mean respectfully, the misfits, the mavericks the outlaws, the outcasts, the people, the renegades, the people that, that have always done things their own way with, in, with, with, with integrity, you know, and, and morale or moral values. But it's like, I wanted to find a different way to make a living, to share my message, to make a lot of money online, to be able to travel and do things from anywhere I want in the world. And so that's how I got this Marshall Live brand is that I believe, because I'm a lifetime athlete and you know this as an athlete, the best of the best of the best, they train relentlessly. They train consistently. There are no days off. It doesn't mean like, oh, no days off. Like, yeah, you're taking days off, but your days are programmed. It's active rest. There's things that are going on. And as an athlete that wants to get to the top of the top of the top, I know that the things that define the best and the best of the best are the guys who are willing and gals who are willing to show up and do everything every day in a certain way that requires greatness. Now, is that very tough? Yes, it is. So when I wanted to become a paid speaker and I realized that the club was not for me, I realized that the number one way to become a speaker is speak. And I realized that if Earl Nightingale had had social media, he yes. would be going live every single day. If Alan Watts had had freaking social media, that's a platform. 
And so you and I got connected because in 2014, I had just gotten certified to be a personal trainer and I was living in San Diego, except everybody in San Diego was in great shape and it was a personal trainer and it was tough <laughs> to make money. And so I stumbled across this guy online, long story longer, named Mike Chang, six pack shortcuts or six secret six pack shortcuts, doesn't matter. And Kyle, at the time, I was, I, Instagram had just come out and I was trying to learn how to, and I hope everybody that's listening understands in this story, I'm literally giving you guys the game on how to build an online brand. Like I'm telling you oh, here we go, how baby. simple it is. Like I, like, I hope that you understand the story I'm sharing. Like this is so dumb simple that even a country dummy like me can do it. And so in 2014, I'm like, okay, I need to learn how to make money in my personal, or my personal training business. So I started using the internet and then I found Instagram and I get on Instagram and I start trying to look for people that are, um, building uh, personal training businesses. Except what did I find online? I found people that were building online personal training businesses. And so for the first time, I was open and awakened to something new. And so that's the first thing is that anybody that's listening to this, if you want true transformation in your life or in your business, your marriage, whatever it is, you have to be willing to show up every day ready to have your life changed. In the beginning, people used to give me shit because three or four times a week, I'd be like, oh my God, I had this life break, life changing thing today. And people would be like, oh, bro, you're always having this life changing thing. And I'm like, yeah, because every morning I wake up ready to have my life changed. Does it mean that my life has changed every day? No, but each day it's compounding over time and I'm available to have a life changing or an aha moment at any day. And I still live that way. So now I'm on Instagram and I'm looking for one thing, but I have the aha moment that there, there's a possibility to build these online businesses. So I'm clicking all around the internet, clicking, clicking, clicking. And I find this guy, Mike Chang. And bro, this dude is tore up. He is jacked, bro. But the only thing that you can find about Mike Chang online, YouTube videos, it doesn't matter. The only thing you can find is this stupid six pack shortcut routine he does at his house. <laughs> <clears throat> As a trainer and an expert, I'm like, Mike, I know you're doing more than that workout. Like, what is going on? And then, yeah, one day, dude, so I'm yeah. thinking I just all of a sudden, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. And so one day I, I click on this, on this link in his profile, right? Uh, Instagram brand new at the time. And I get to this, what I, what I know now is a sales funnel. And it was like this headline and a video. And then all this copy that made me want to buy this program. And I learned all of a sudden that this dude didn't have a website. He had this, and again, I didn't have a word for it. He had this funnel. And so I go, okay, so I'm on Wix. I'm on Wix. I don't know if anybody knows what Wix is. Wix.com. Yep. It's a free website builder. One of the very first ones. I'm on Wix. And if you guys go Marshall Gillen performance blocks, B L O X 360 after this interview and you Google it, you will, my, my original website will still come up. Okay. So anyway, so I build this funnel and um, I understand that if I build one product for one type of person, I can sell it over and over again using the internet. So my whole life now changes. It's 2014 and I create a digital course, a digital training program that was selling off the shelf. Now my only job was to create content online and drive traffic to that link. It's very simple for a lot of people that have been in this program. Some of you guys who don't understand, this is how online digital marketing works. It's this simple. So now what I get is I'm like, okay, all these great things. However, Kyle, you know a little bit of my story. Well, when I was 23, I tried to, uh, I attempted my life. Um, I took uh, an eight ball of cocaine, 53 half bars of Xanax, and a fifth of vodka. In like 30 minutes, I was trying to trying to take my life. And as soon as that happened, uh, I had to, I was scared shitless. And I didn't want to die anymore. I was just reactive in the moment. And so I went to the bathroom. I'm trying to, you know, purge myself and nothing is coming up and I'm getting weaker and weaker and I'm like starting to fade away. And I'm, I'm, I have such a massive amount of regret that I can't even tell you guys the amount of anxiety it kind of makes in my body right now, just going back to that moment. And so I pull out my phone and I call my mom, which now at my age, I can't even imagine what it was like to get that call. But 23 years old, I called 2,100 miles away from, I'm in San Diego, California, I called 2,100 miles back home. And as I'm fading out, I'm telling my mom, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did this. Sorry for everything. I'm sorry for everything. And she's yelling on the phone, Marshall, wake up, wake up. So eventually uh, she got a hold of a friend, kicked in the door a couple hours later, got me off the floor. They rescued me, took me to the emergency room, all the things. Great. So I, I, I wake up in the emergency room and the very first thought I have is, oh my God, thank you. I'm alive. Immediately followed by the belief system that my stepdad instilled in me at, at my childhood which is I'm so worthless, I can't even kill myself, right? So now I'm so um, embarrassed and ashamed and just uh, just judgmental of myself that I didn't want to die anymore, but I also didn't want to live. So I started to live as recklessly as I possibly could. 
I'm talking like partying, driving fast. I mean, all the things, fights, violence, bro. I even got this stupid tattoo on my chest for anybody that's watching. It says live fast, die fun. And that was how I was being. And along that time, I met a kid who became one of my very best friends. And fast forward to 2000, uh, well, fast forward in 2014, and he's struggling. Uh, he's struggling hard. He's been struggling for a few months. I know this. He's showing all the signs that I showed when I was, you know, ready to take my life. And he would used to call me, but every time he called, I didn't know what to say to him. And I was struggling myself. So like, it got to the point where I'm like, I can't even answer his call because I don't like, what am I going to say to you, Dustin? And so he calls me and I ignore his call. You know, when I listen to voicemail, it's him saying, you know, call me back when you get a chance. I really need your help. He's crying right late. And I'm like, I'll call him tomorrow. And then I'm like, okay, I'll call him on, on the next weekend. And then a month passes and uh, I get a call from his sister at 4.30 in the morning that Dustin took his life. And so for me, I was 29 years old and I realized for the very first time, or I wondered rather for the very first time, if I had shared what I went through with Dustin, would it have made a difference? If I had told them what I felt like, when I had that, that regret in the moment of how, how I actually knew I didn't want to die, would that have changed something? If I had told them the demons that I was battling along the way after I woke up and these things, would it have saved his life? I don't know. And since then, I have been able to release the guilt I have from that. However, that was the first time, and I didn't know him at the time, and this is whatever you want. I believe in God, so I'm not here to tell anybody whatever to believe, but the God of my spirituality, which I call God. And so that was the first time that God touched my life. And at the time, I didn't know that was God. But the feeling I had was you have to share your story. Now, listen, I'm 29 years old. Okay, you guys, I'm a drug addict. Um, I am a five-cent college dropout. I'm divorced. I'm literally just going to work bartending and I'm partying every night. That's all my life is. I don't know what mentorship means. I do not know what entrepreneurship means. I, I don't know what any of that stuff means. Okay. I don't know what personal development is. I'm telling the audiences because I want you guys to understand that that was only 10 years ago. Okay, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, I was like, I have to figure something out. And then God started sending me the signs. What happened next was, again, just a miracle, really. But about it was two weeks after Dustin passed away, I'm downtown bartending. And this guy, older guy, walks in and orders a Bud Light. It's a busy Monday night. Nothing special, though. And um, he's sitting there silent. And he's watching me do my thing. And I'm chopping it up as a bartender. Like, bro, I'm like, I'm like, hey, I'm in it up. I'm like a game show host back there. That's how I learned how to, how to speak, really. And so uh, eventually this guy goes, hey, you should be a motivational speaker. And I'm thinking like to myself before I turn around, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to freaking play this game <laughs> with this guy tonight. I'm like, all right, whatever, dude. So I turn around, I'm like, oh yeah, bro, what do you do? And he's like, well, I'm a motivational speaker. And that was the first time that I ever thought, even dreamed, even knew that that was something that would be possible for me. And so fast forward another two years and I'm learning digital marketing. I'm making money on Amazon with drop shipping and white labeling the products. And I was doing a, um, a social media agency at the time where I'm running social media for businesses that are paying me a thousand dollars a month to do it. And I'm learning the entrepreneurship and I'm making money. I have mentors. And so what I start to do is I start to share videos online. And these online videos are not like, oh, I made a million dollars. They're like, hey, listen, I was struggling with this, um, but this is what I did. And this is how I overcame it. You're I started doing the vulnerability. 100%. The very first video that I ever made is out there of me going, hey, this is my journey to becoming a highly paid public speaker. I don't know if it'll work. I might fall flat on my face. I don't think I will. You know, I enjoy you. I, I invite you to join the journey as I go from broke to rich, from nothing to something, using social media and my stories. Uh, and this is going to be the story of the whole thing. And that's how the whole thing started. So what happened is I started to realize that the more I shared those stories, the more people I was starting to reach and influence online. Okay, great. So now what happens is, I realized the differentiator at the time is that Facebook Live had just come out. Like it oh, just, yes. Hit, just <laughs> the streets. And so now I'm realizing like, okay, well, this is the deal. Like if you want to be a speaker, then you should speak every day. And so I just started going live every day. And so it started with, uh, it just was, it wasn't Marshall Live in the beginning. Like I was just going live every day. And then I started interviewing people live almost every day. So now I'm starting to hack other people's audiences. I'm stealing their audiences. I would hit up Kyle and I'd be like, yo, bro, I was watching you, you're doing your thing, you're, you had your baby and you're building your business. Like, I would love to share your story on my, on my show. Like, you want to go live with me on Facebook on, on my show and, and tell people about what you do? And he, uh, and of course, everybody's like, yes. Even the people that are high up, you guys, this is the ultimate networking secret. This is why you want to start a podcast or a show because now you have credibility and a reason to reach up, to network up to people that are otherwise unavailable to you. And if you understand the timing, then when Eric Thomas is releasing his book, or Matthew McConaughey is releasing his book, 
or they have the event or the challenge or the new product, timing is everything. And so if you have this show and you can leverage it, you can reach up in the right times and you can get big people who would otherwise say no to you to come on your show because the publicity they'll take anywhere. If they have an extra hour, they'll do it. So don't sleep on that. Okay, so cool. So now live video comes out, I'm going live and I'm interviewing live people and my brand is growing. And if I'm being honest with everybody, one day I just got stoned and I was walking by the bay and I was like, oh, time to go live. And I was like, what's up everybody? It's your boy Marshall live and I am live. <laughs> and there it I'm is. Talking about, yeah. And, um, and then so people started digging it. And so I started traveling to events and people would be like, yo, it's Marshall live and I am live. <laughs> okay. And um, then finally I went to, um, so, so this the is the other half. No, no, dude. I, I had like, I had like speakers from stage. Like I was sitting in the front row one time and Nick Unsworth is like, never met me, never seen him, nothing of his event. Uh, and he's like, wait, you're Marshall live, Marshall live. And I am live. I love that. I love and, it. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so, keep going, uh, so far. Guys, so, um, you're dropping some game here, making sure you're taking some notes. Like, bro, this is the ultimate hack. For this. So this is the ultimate hack. So I, so I, brand, I branded that. I branded that as Marshall Live, and I used to wear a blue T-shirt that said "I'm Live." Remember? I don't know if you remember that. It yes. was just a blue oh, yes, T-shirt, yes. the color of Facebook, and all it said was the "Color I'm Facebook." Live. Yeah. <laughs> and so that was on my profile. That was on every single social media profile. This is why this is important for those of you who are coming up. That was on every social media profile. So. I had a list of my dream 25 people that I wanted to um, build relationships with. So let's say, for instance, one of those is Ty Lopez. Let's say one of those is Gary Vee. Let's say one of those is Russell Brunson, Billy Jean is marketing. Um, who else? Uh, uh, Tom Bilyeu. These I'm telling you guys these names for a reason. So let's say those are the people. Okay, great. So now there's an event coming up in Vegas where all those people are speaking. Guess what I'm going to do for 30 days straight? I'm going to go to the every single piece of content that they release with my blue I'm live fucking profile picture. And I'm going to engage with them a thoughtful content on every a thoughtful message or comment on every piece of content. So for the next 30 days, they're only going to see this Marshall live kid who's leaving all these things, boom, 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 leading up to this event that I, that I know they're going to be at. So now when I show up at the event and I'm branded out in my Marshall live shirt, and I've been building an audience of people who are also at the event who are seeing me online as an expert, I have questions pre-recorded, ready to go for when those, those people are done speaking and they ask a question here, I'm the first person standing up, raising my hand and asking a question. And guess fucking what? I have somebody sitting next to me that's recording the entire thing. So now I have strategically for 30 days straight, branded myself and positioned myself in the minds of the highest level people that are going to be at an event that I'm going to have access to. And then when the first chance gets an opportunity to go, I'm up, my hands raised, they're calling it, I'm getting content made. And the entire audience of people who already watches me online is now watching me have this special bond with this, with this influencer. And they only know me because I'm Marshall Live and I strategically went at them. And so everybody's it. looking at me like, this motherfucker knows Ty Lopez. And I also have a piece of an asset of me and Ty Lopez going back and forth that I can now market and put paid advertising on behind online and, 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 and target his audience. I've done that with all these big time influencers. I think I remember that. I, now that I think about it, just, just to slow down just real quick, like, didn't you, didn't you have Ty Lopez uh, see your social media or something? Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then there's another event. I've done this with Ty a bunch of times. Like when Ty sees me, he knows me as Marshall Live. And yeah. he, he'll pick me in a crowd because yeah. he has a relationship with me and, he, and he'll, he knows that I'll tee him up questions that look good. So, and that's what I'm doing on purpose with, with my Thanks, questions. Sir. And I asked him 100%. And so that's how the whole thing of Marshall Live started. I just started going live. Now, what I realized, though, Kyle, was as a, I wanted to be a speaker, the more I started to book talks, which first started off as giving talks at free meetups throughout San Diego. What I realized is that because I had this online brand, I started, I started to make, um, I started to host monthly virtual events. Now, this is in 2017 before people were doing virtual events. I used to host a once a month virtual workshop, $33. And for two hours, I would teach you everything you knew. And at the end of the workshop, I would invite you to go deeper into your mastery by joining my coaching program for 6,000 bucks. I didn't know at the time that that's what was, that was called selling one to many. I didn't know that. I was always trying to book sales calls still, right? So at the time, I, that's when I first discovered spell, selling one to many. So all of a sudden, I realized I could do this virtual speaking thing, which I called digital speaking. Then I didn't call it virtual; we called it digital speaking. I was a digital speaker, and I would host, host these digital digital events. And all of a sudden, I was like, "Why is not everybody doing this? Like, you could start a six figure speaking business." I made 112 grand in seven months by accident doing this. That's how the whole thing started. 
And so I realized, holy shit, like if I just host my own monthly virtual event, then I'm essentially a speaker. Now, when I started going and speaking at these free meetups, I used to set up this tripod like I'm set up on right now. So I would be at the meetup and I would be up in the front of the audience. I'd have my I'm live shirt on and a lot of them knew me because they're following me. And I would say, and you know, we're talking audiences of like 20 to 50 people, small, small audiences. And I'd be like, hey, what's up, everybody? So uh, thank you so much for letting me be here tonight. Hey, give me one second. I'm going to go. I'm going to turn this camera around and go live real quick. And then we'll get started. If that's cool with you guys. Now, again, you guys, this is ninja level stuff. Because what I'm telling them without telling them is, hey, I am somebody to watch online. Because I'm stopping my speech in the middle of it. I had this bright ass light and I'm setting up to go live. They're going, what the heck? So, okay. So I'm like, hey, one second. I do my go. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Marshall live. And I am live. And I'm out here with Coaches and Tacos tonight in La Jolla. Shout out to my boy, Alexander. I'm going to do my thing right now. So I'll get to all you guys' questions at the end uh, later tonight. But uh, sit back and watch me do my thing. All right. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I'm like, all right, uh, what's up, everybody? And then I get into my talk. Now, that's so powerful because people who have seen me online only but will never be able to come see me in person, when they see me doing my thing at an event, they go, holy crap, Marshall must be some of an expert. He's really out there doing it, not just one of these talking heads on the internet. Now, for the people that are at the physical event who have never met me before, they, must, they see that I must be somebody online because I'm going live. So what's the first thing that they're all doing while I'm, while I'm talking? They're grabbing their phones and seeing what the heck is going on, on Facebook. And they're adding me. And because my, pro my profile is set up at the top end of my funnel, pointing towards one thing, which is my one to many sales offer, which is a workshop, a virtual workshop. You can't do anything besides go to that. They all of a sudden go, holy shit, look at this guy is amazing. And look at him online. He like, look at this thing. He must be some sort of an expert. So what I did is what I now coined as the social selling ecosystem. That's what that is called. This is a social selling ecosystem. And I realized that the more often I spoke offline, the more fuel and the more profit I made online. Yeah. The so biggest, wait, the the bigger... ecosystem, just for the listeners, so like yeah. components, right? So go through that one more time. Sales ecosystem. So it's A, B, so, C. Yeah. So what you're doing is I'm standing here in the middle. Yes. And I'm going to build an online platform right here. And the online platform is my show or my podcast. That's my pillar piece of content. My platform for speaking, Marshall Live. Great. Now, I also want to build an offline platform. So offline platform is going to be me speaking at events because I'm a speaker. Okay. So I can leverage my content on this one. So when I'm, when I'm speaking, I'm live streaming here. And then the people that are here through the live stream are watching this one. They're coming here. So they're driving traffic towards each other constantly. So and you know what I love about live? that? What's that? I love how it's not like on the internet, you see this mechanism, that mechanism, this, this, this. it's simple. It's two things oh, over, it's so and over again. And I feel like a lot of people will kind of either a get really excited and come up with multiple ideas and try to like act on all of them. And there's no, Money generated right. coming in. Heck, you made 112k oh. by accident. Yeah, That's focusing accident. on the one or two things that matter was getting eyeballs to yeah. you in person and oh, virtual. That's it. I was hacking authority. So here's the here's the thing though the the main the main hiccup in that whole entire process is booking stages because that's the part okay. that's dependent on somebody else. So what I developed at the time and I did and I've now pointed as my million dollar meetup strategy. But I just wanted to be able to give money back, like I learned from my mentor, make money matter. And my other mentor who I met in this mastermind, Dan Fleischman, he at the time had just launched a brand new event series called Elevator Nights. And he's a, he's a billionaire. He's movie famous. He's connected to all the most famous people in the world. So he runs digital marketing for them originally. And so I'm watching Paul do his thing with Make Money Matter. And I'm watching Dan Fleischman host these free events. They're baller as hell. He gets a speaker panel there. People come, he does them all in the big cities and he uses it to raise money to give away. And I go, oh my God. God, what did I why just? Why am I trying to? Why yes. am I trying to book other people's stages? I go. I'm just going to start hosting a free monthly meetup. And my best friend Larry Tucker runs International Network of Hearts that rescues kids from human sex trafficking. So I'm going to invite Larry, and we're going to every event is going to raise money to give away to Larry's organization. So now all of a sudden I'm hosting a free monthly meetup in San Diego. I'm getting 100 to 200 people a, a month in a room that are coming there solely based on yes, they want to learn how to be better speakers and stuff, but they want to be able to make their money matter and give back to a cause that they, they believe in. So this whole thing is predicated now on, I'm not even, I'm not even selling anything. I'm just going live and showing you guys how to do this as I raise money for a cause that I believe in. Do you know how many people want to get behind me and buy my products now when you lead with that, making your money matter first? 
like my mentor taught me, if I need a million dollars to live my dream life, how do I go out and make $2 million, give a million away, keep a million for myself and still live my dream life? And so I realized that in the beginning, I could play the game and try to be in the club where we all got to do each other off to, to get on each other's stages. And it's just a whole bunch of fakeness. Or I could just do my own thing and actually turn my mess into my message. And I leveraged this free offline meetup at, like, against social selling ecosystem against this other thing. Now, listen, you guys, this is, other, this is where you make the money. I sold the $33 workshop. I recommend that if you, I recommend that if you are an online service provider, you should host a monthly a free, or you should host a monthly virtual workshop and you should either do it for free or you should do it for between $7 and 97 bucks. In the beginning, I used to do it for $33. And so they would pay $33 for the first 90 minutes. I would teach them everything that they needed to know, I, how to, how, my system, how to implement it and what to do next. And at the end of it, I would say, let me answer any questions. And they would answer all, ask me all the questions. And then I would say, okay, great. Now, these are all the questions you're going to have after this. So I let them know because you don't know what you don't know. So I'm giving you guys this, the formula on how to sell at a workshop. I train them for 90 minutes. I give them the, the value. And then I answer the questions. And then I give them the questions that I know they're going to have. And I know that they don't know the answer to. And I say, listen, if you can answer every single one of these questions, then you can take this, this workshop and you should run right now. And you should go make as much money as you fucking possibly can. And I'm going to tell the whole world about you. And it's going to be awesome. But for those of you who know that you don't know every answer to these questions or you don't know most of these answers, I'm going to tell you it's going to behoove you mostly to take the next step with me. And this is how we can work together. So now I'm selling $6,000 workshop or a uh, 12, 12 week coaching program on the back end of that. Okay, great. So what's happening now is I'm getting 50 people. You, dude, you know, back then Facebook was the wild, wild west, man. You, you were like, we were getting thousands of views, hundreds of likes. Dude, a cost was per lead on the ad, man, was oh, like, bro. Huh, 100%. $1 could get, get me in front of thousands of people. Bro, remember, you used to be getting point zero 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 one like, cent views on your videos. Anyways. Bro, you know, like that painting with the screen where he's like this? That, yes. Like, dude, we'd be looking at the screenshot. We'd be like, oh, my God. Yes. 100%. Oh. I was Good. getting 50 to 70 mm -hmm. people in my workshop for 33 bucks a month um, or for $33 a time each month. And I was closing like 20 of them. So mm -hmm. you guys do the math. Okay. So that's how the whole thing started. And so for each and every one of you, I still deploy the same thing. Literally the tell system I'm telling you right now is how I'm building my company towards a hundred thousand dollar months instead of years, all, all recurring revenue. Because I took my $25,000 offer and I made it a 12 month program instead of a 90 day program. And instead of charging $25,000 paid in full, I charged uh, $375 a week. Well, so I like that too. Because, you know, that's like as you're raising your prices, it, it also, you're able to impact a lot more people or a lot. I would say you're able to put more time into those people. 100%. At the same time. A lot more people isn't always the best, but at the same time, no. if you can hack it, great. But then. Yeah, there's a caveat to, to going after the masses, which I think is super smart with your marketing strategy with the $33. Yeah. And then well, I've changed the it now. going into that. It, it's, it's changed now because school, the school makes, I mean, I don't know if you have a school group yet. But Promosi like, school, S-K-O-O-L. -S yeah. Homie. He needs so to give me a I Like I just said Alex, man. I mean, everyone knows who yeah. Mr. Promosi is nowadays. 100%. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what I do now is I run a free virtual workshop on a Saturday morning, one hour. And I don't really do any depth of training. What I do is I really um, shift their paradigm in that one hour workshop. And then I invite them to my school group for $49 a month. And so I don't even promote anything besides that because now for $49 a month, they're inside of my school group. They have access to every course that I have. And, um, and I'm not trying to plug anything, guys. I'm literally just trying to help pull back the curtain so you guys can copy me. Like, please take what I'm telling you and go copy me with whatever the fuck it is you sell. So I do a, a Saturday mornings, I do a one hour workshop um, and I'm really just doing it to shift the paradigms. I plug my $49 a month, um, a school group at the end, which is for speakers. And then in that group, they have access to, to my courses, whatever, but I do a live call every Wednesday morning. So literally inside my group, I'm doing a sales call basically once a week. And I'm selling now to my, my well, my master, my in-person mastermind now, or my inner circle or whatever. So for those of you who are wondering, okay, well, how can I make this work for me? Start virtually. The question you need to ask yourself is, I'm going to ask you right now, what are you so good at? You could literally teach a class on it. Okay, write that down. Now figure out what the three biggest objections that your ideal client has when it comes to buying a program from you. You should already know these. So now 
I say, hey, Kyle, what do you, what's something you're so good you can teach a workshop on? And you go, it's this. I go, great. What are the three biggest objections that your client has when it comes to working with you? And you go, these, these, and these. I go, great. I want you to spend one hour and I want you to intro yourself. I want you to talk about the biggest problem that you see in your industry. And I want you to talk about these three things that you've learned that have helped you win. And the reason you're talking about these three things that you've learned is because what you're secretly doing is disproving their current belief system. So for example, mine is, number one is, uh, how to get rich speaking for free because people believe that you have to be booked and paid a fee to be on the stage to get rich speaking. And I'm like, no, you can get rich speaking for free. And then I share a story with them that proves that. So what I'm really doing in that, in that story is I'm, I'm shifting their paradigm and overcoming the current belief system. So now what it used to take me a long time to do, I do in one hour a month. So you, while everybody's doing sales calls and cold outreach and this and that, I'm literally just going live. I'm interviewing people. I'm bebopping around. I'm home at my mom's house in this spare old lady bedroom. And I'm going, hey, I have this free workshop. Like, come check it out. I'll teach you everything I know in one hour. And then they come and I break down their belief system and I make them an offer to my low ticket school group. And then I do my thing and it's through. Okay, so, so you're using the, the free, price. so you're using the free lessons to get them into your ecosystem and then being able to promote like the 33. I'm, again, I'm just using the 33 as yeah. an, an example, but just to kind of see it yeah. from um, either viewers or like, uh, I know a lot of marketers, especially mm -hmm. that um, I've coached a lot of marketing agency yeah. owners well, and and like yeah. a lot of people what i like what i like what you're doing immediately is um something i just started picking up a little bit late in the game i need to meet dude i i, I wish i talked to you freaking sooner bro <laughs> literally uh quick story so one of my companies is called annuities on autopilot i only do two things it's i'm either coaching on the side or annuities on autopilot that's the main thing and Anuis Autopilot is a life insurance broker and financial advising marketing company where we basically run ads for them, traditional agency. And what was interesting is that a lot of people in that business are either major top producers or mm -hmm. not necessarily the best. And sometimes there's in between, but more or less than not. And with that being said, after sales call, after sales call, after sales call, I remember having eight, when you guys, People are like listening again, like what he, what, what did you say? You were like, I used to do these for hours and now I just do hours. it in a single month. Yeah. yeah. And there'd be like probably what calls that are missed too. Oh dude, all the time. My whole, I lived, I lived on the beach in San Diego, bro. And I'd be stuck in the house for 12 hours doing sales calls. And yeah, yeah you know, yeah. Cinema wouldn't even show up. And, and it's like this 15 minute call actually turns into a 60 minute call. And it's like, bro, like what is going on with my life? I thought I was supposed to have freedom as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And like... With that being said, all those calls be having no people no showing, and I just want to highlight that for a second. One of my guys that work with me and uh, knew he's an autopilot is, is the joke is, you know, you know, I could I can do a lot more in my uh, with my time, <laughs> you know, playing golf than like uh, rather than taking all these calls. So I was like, interesting, you know, I'm uh, well, I'm feeling the same so, way. And so uh, let me let's let me unpack this for you for a second. So let's yeah. do some real live live coaching for you real Wait, second. Let's this, get this it. Man. This works. Yeah. So you just. You guys, this is why events sell. I sell everything with events. I sell with virtual events and in-person events. So inside of my school, I'm going to tell us how it applies to you, Kyle. Inside of my school group, okay, I have two offers. Either join my inner circle for a year for 25 grand or come get three, di three days of live coaching from me for three grand, okay? So either you come to the mastermind for three days, you get, three, get the same thing, okay? Now, guess what I offer at the end of the three-day mastermind? The twenty five thousand dollar offer, anyways. Okay, mm -hmm. so I want other people to understand how the ecosystem works. Like now, the one hour free virtual monthly event, which is really just a sales call. I just get everybody together. I'm like, let's do this all at once, okay? So we can all not waste each other's time. So I, <laughs> yes, I, so exactly. I get, so, and, and, but it also leverages yeah. group think. You know, it, mm -hmm. it leverages group think because when one person does something, everybody else is going to want to do it. So my conversions are actually higher at the end of the month by doing this one thing and leveraging group think that my conversions are over the course of all my calls, trying to get people one-on-one, -on -one, all scared and timid to say yes. Okay, but that, that's beside. So I get people into this group and then that's what it is. Come spend time with me or come uh, join the group. Steve Jobs uh, covered uh, his trillion dollar blueprint for building Apple years ago. And that's how I, and I won't go into it here, but that's what I built Top Page Speaker around. The first rule in that blueprint was Steve Jobs' trillion dollar blueprint was, I'm in the business of creating new customers. That was the first thing he was said. Not in the business of computers, not in the business of whatever, whatever. I'm in the business of creating new 
customers. Okay, great. So I looked at that and thought about that. Well, number like five or six on his list, the blueprint was create uh, ideal buying environments. So what does Apple do every single time they release a new product? What do they host? An event. And they're the yes. big stage with a huge thing in the audience. They create an ideal buying environment out of every single upgrade, update, release that they do. I just copied Apple. I just copied the people that were already working. And so why I'm saying that to people is like, you can literally do this exact same thing with your brand or your business. That's all I do. And so if I'm going to sell something I, and that's high ticket, like 25 grand, then I'm just going to create an ideal buying environment. I'm going to get people hyped up. I'm going to give them training. I'm going to transform them. I'm going to tell them I can't do it in three days. But if you want to go deeper with this, then join here. Don't don't leave this community. Actually, I, I create FOMO. So when they show up the very first night, they go, hey, for the next three days, you're going to be part of my inner circle. You're going to know what it's like to tap into my energy, to be part of my life, to do life and business together. And then at the end of three days, when you guys want to talk about how we can make this long term, we will. Does that sound cool? All right, let's, let's uh, get started with today. But anyways, okay, great. So now that's the plan. So now I've just given context to why events sell so well. Now let's talk about Kyle. Okay. The people he's targeting are very high level. They're not hanging out on social media throughout the day. So hosting a free workshop once a month is not really going to be his thing. Now, if I was him, where do you live? Uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. So if I'm him in Louisville, Kentucky, what I'm doing is every six weeks, I'm hosting a golf tournament. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start reaching out to high level people that I know that I want to get, and I'm going to invite them to uh, join the golf tournament. Come out to Louisville. We're going to be hosting a little private golf tournament, uh, just a bunch of people that are like us. Uh, just, you know what I mean? And I'm going to invite them out to do something that they like. Now, imagine if I get 12 or 15 high level people out to play golf for a weekend, and uh, we're just we're just chopping up. Maybe I have an expert there to help them, uh, a couple of class sessions to help them scale whatever it is they're doing. I position myself as the expert. And at the end of it, I said, hey, listen, if you guys want us to implement this system for you, all you got to do is sign up right here and we'll make this deal happen. You guys go home. We'll keep chopping it up, whatever, whatever. So obviously, that's just one example. But that is, yeah. that is an example of something that you could do that's one to many sales that doesn't look like a traditional sales event. And so there's all kinds of ways to leverage one to many models in any industry, right, to be able to sell whatever it is that you're selling with more money, with less work. But most people are it, ha have themselves in a spot where they need money right now. And so that's why a lot of people have trouble transitioning into this, which is, you know, a thing. But um, I find that selling with events is the number one way to sell anything. Storytelling and oh, events, man. Listen, I let me ask you something real quick. When you yeah. realized the internet worked, <laughs> like you could make money, what was your first sale? Like my, okay, I'll so, give you mine. I'll give you mine real quick. I was, and I say this because you're gonna love where I was at, guys. Marshall loves bodybuilding. Okay, I got these funky ears, and I went to this place called the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio. And Marshall knows what's up. We we offline yep. like you can go to Arnold Classic. I'm telling you guys, you guys can get a crap ton of supplements. Uh, basically, they're all samples, but it's good yep. for a whole year, baby. And uh, I was competing at the Arnold Classic. There's <clears throat> jiu-jitsu but they got powerlifting competitions bodybuilding there's people break world records it's insane and i was um i think it was like after eating breakfast or something like that and i created my own course on how to create just some facebook ads right oh, <laughs> i wanted nice. to see if i could like just teach someone it too uh because at that point in time i i, I was learning the skill but i was like all right how can i also share the wealth right and so right. anyways i created this like a little program for 500 bucks and I was networking within social media groups, okay? Got on a call with someone and closed a $500 sale. And now I, I, I was with someone, he, uh, I forgot, he was my training partner. I said, bro, you can make money on the internet. My life has changed forever. <laughs> and I forever. have not went back Stop. since then. And so brother, what did, that, what did that look like for you? Was it similar well, what was the scenario? Dude, there's a couple of things. I, mean, I was selling online in 2014. I was selling my performance blocks 360. And at the time, um, it didn't feel like anything. It felt, um, I felt scared because it okay. was so easy that I felt scared it was going to go away. You know what I mean? And so I was a lot, a lot of fear and anxiety around it that I made up out of nothing because that's how I was raised, right? And I didn't even realize it at the time. So let's fast forward though, because what I was selling was a program. I wasn't talking to anybody really that much or anything. But if you fast forward about three years, Again, I, I, I had been selling on Amazon private label. 
I was selling phone screens and I had these little tags made uh, called screens against humanity phone <laughs> screens for people who are terrible with phones. And I was like selling this shit out of them. Right. And uh, bracelets. And so I was selling these things on Amazon, making three, four, four 500 bucks a day and then selling um, drop shipping stuff through Shopify. Okay, great. So I tell you guys, I tell you the first consulting call I ever sold was for $97. It was one hour and it was to help this lady learn what shop or drop shipping uh, and white, white labeling meant. Kyle, when I, looking back, when I tell you that I taught, I told her everything, bro, I'll tell you, I told her everything. I probably did her such a great disservice because I probably gave her too much. I was so fearful that I, 97, someone was taking $97 for a call, dude. Yeah. I was like, who am I? Who am I? And he's like, oh my God. And so I, I remember getting off that call and feeling so bad. I felt so guilty. And um, I felt like an imposter, to be honest with you. And I, and okay. I felt like it can't, it can't be this easy. That's how, that's how the first sale I ever got felt. But at the same time, there was an excitement, again, because what you said, because I realized the power of the internet. And that power almost derailed me in the beginning, if I'm being honest, because it just was too much. And it was too much for my belief system. It was too much for my life Bro, experience. I we're used to working it. jobs and getting 100%. paid for, like, bartender. Like, 100%. I mean, you would, I mean, I, don't, I mean, obviously you work on the weekends and you can get really paid yeah. pretty, good, pretty good, but that's multiple, multiple people paying you maybe a dollar here, $5, maybe $10. But from one person for an Dude, hour, for an hour now, and I don't mean this, but now like yeah. when I set up, it's 2,500 bucks for an hour call. Right. And I'm like, yeah, because of the results I've created. Yeah. So I want people to understand that there's an evolution of what happens when you guys start doing this. I didn't start off slinging $25,000 inner circle packages. I started off slinging 12 week coaching programs for a thousand bucks and feeling like I was taking everybody's money. Like, oh my God, who am I? When in reality, I was like, a thousand dollars to help you feel that's why my clients became millionaires before i ever made my first million and i couldn't figure it out i'm like why are these guys making millions and i am still trying to make a million dollars i had one guy go on to make nine figures and i'm like what the fuck i couldn't understand it but i had a broken wealth blueprint which i fixed since but well point being is go ahead well i was just gonna say too um you know like think about you know all the things that you have gone through i want to go back into you know okay you it's now this amount it used to be this amount mm -hmm. and it's because of what you've accomplished now think about talking to like old marshall right getting stuck at like that whole area of being stuck right mm -hmm. guys like i i shared with him earlier i shared with you guys that i went through this thing in high school and just think if i met marshall during like high school and he yanked me out of it. you know how many years how much time i would have like saved and i have to deal with yeah, that value 100%. point right there is invaluable. Hundred percent, and that's why he can charge higher. It's not, it's not about the time, the nine to five, that based off time anymore. It's based off how much value you've made. And then, and I remember feeling exactly kind of fearful too with like the marketing packages. Cause that's where I came up was like, you know, you know, a business is gonna pay me five hundred bucks a month or a thousand bucks a month or whatever it is a month. To do to do this, I, I'm scared to even say the no number. Way. That's for the money. I understand. Yep. The first, so I started a social media marketing agency, and the first uh, client I signed was a, a Italian restaurant downtown San Diego. Okay. A thousand dollars a month, and then six hundred dollars startup fee. When he handed me that sixteen hundred dollar check, dude, I was like, I, I felt I felt guilty almost. Yeah, but I still felt guilty. I'm like, yeah. oh my okay. god, am I worth it? Am I going to be able to produce sixteen hundred dollars worth of value? Nowadays, I'm like, bro, like, I, I'm not doing it for 600 bucks. I mean, there's no way. Like, I, but because I understand it different. So you've probably heard this story before, and a lot of the viewers may have too, but, and I'm gonna not gonna do it as service because I can't exactly remember it. But the premise of the story is there's this huge uh, ship that was in the bay, and it wasn't working, you know, and the, and the engineers on the ship and all the people couldn't figure out how to get it started again. Like, it was not like something they couldn't figure it out. So they called this guy who's the best, the best, the best. And they had to pay him like $100,000 to come out. Okay, great. Pay him $100,000. This guy is the best ship fixer in the world. And after about an hour of walking around the entire massive ship inside and out, he walks to his truck and he opens up the toolbox and he comes back with this one, this one huge hammer. And he walks to this part of the ship and he bangs it. And he walks, puts the toolbox back and he says, all right, go ahead and try it. And it fires right up. <laughs> and the guy that... You know, the, the like assistant captain or whatever, the, the, the second in charge is like, why would we pay this guy $100,000 to come do that? And the guy's like, you paid me $100,000 to come do it because I know exactly where to knock and how hard. 
And so I want you guys to understand that the value comes from knowing how to get a result faster in a shorter time than anybody else knows how to do it. The value exchange is you can either take eight years and learn how to build a million dollar speaking business on your own, or you can spend three days with me and I'll show you how to do it and I'll help you do it. Why people join my inner circle is because they need to borrow my belief that it's possible and that they're possible in the interim of closing this gap. And so what I wish that I had known in the beginning is that I should have just hired a coach. I bought the courses, but I was always too scared to get the coach. The courses were great, but the, once you learn the strategy, that's the easiest part. The hardest part of the whole process is not making a million dollars. It's believing that you're worthy of making a million dollars. And once you crack that code, then everything changes. So for example, <clears throat> this is why these things matter. And I want to say this is the last thing is that, <clears throat> yes, it's about creating value, but also I pick my customers. Okay, I pick the customer. So let's let me say it like this. <clears throat> Imagine that there's two um, restaurants right next to each other, two Mexican restaurants. Okay, and they each serve flan. I don't know if you guys know what flan is. It's delicious Mexican dessert. Okay, so if both restaurants serve flan. This restaurant over here says authentic, delicious Mexican flan, and this one over here says blended up milk and bread mush. Which one are you gonna buy? Shoot, the one that sounds the best. In this case, I would 100%. say, yeah. And it's the same thing, right? They're the same thing. You're going to buy the authentic, delicious flan, Mexican flan. But it, it really, essentially, it is just blended up bread and milk and mush, okay? So what I'm saying is words matter. So the fact that this Mexican restaurant uses that words and those, those words specifically, he is choosing, they are choosing the type of customer that they want to work with. So I'm telling you guys the same thing when it comes to your businesses. Yes, we can talk about value and, and this imposter syndrome, but you still are fully in control of the customers that your business is choosing by the way that you know how to use language and, and communication, <clears throat> which is why I'm so big. Once you learn persuasive communication and you understand one-to-many selling and you can combine the two, it's game over for anything that you're doing. If you, if you're, if the caveat being, if you're good at what you do and you have conviction behind why you do it. I'm happy you said that too. Like being good at what you do. I, uh, oh man, there's, uh, I mean, in the beginning I had to like learn just like what the best business system or best person to make the, best impact in in the beginning and then i was able like a action provides a path i guess at the same time mm, well, that's yes. what, what i'm getting at here oh bro, and, that's a good that's a good quote action wait, say that again uh, 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 man let me see if i can remember a action breeds a path oh, action man. Builds a path. Build, yeah action builds what, the path what words words matter right so we'll just say yeah, action yeah. breeds a path that, that's what we'll say um that was good dude Everyone knows being a great speaker is about good one-liners, so. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. No, but, like, I was – it's just uh, the, the thing that lingers in, my, in, in me when, I, when I'm hearing you speak is, like, you know, again, like, your, me, your mess is your message. And when you were able to kind of figure out, you know, what was wrong, the universe kind of – or God in this case really yeah. provided a path for you. Yeah. And, and oh. um, I was – there was this verse in like Ecclesiastes or in, uh, towards like, I think it's like tw uh, Ecclesiastes 12 through 18, I want to say. Tor anyways, towards the very bottom of it was, um, you know, worrying about the future is meaningless, yeah. basically. Let me hold up my phone real quick, actually. It's just, I, I know I have it popped up too because I've been looking at it a lot. Um, but what I want to go with, like the reason why I want to bring this up, the main, the main reason is we've talked about a lot of beliefs, a lot of things that, you know, just held us back with it, which with your dad or the people that you were raised around with. I know like when we're younger, um, mm. like our personal beliefs are developed. I think like, like when you're eight years old, give or take, and there's a lot of reverse engineering with that. Yeah. And uh, I hired a couple, like a, an alignment coach once. And we talked about that for a deep thing. Okay. I found it. <laughs> Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 11 and it starts at seven and light is sweet. How pleasant to see a new day dawning when people live to be very old, let them rejoice in every day of life, but let them also remember there will be many dark days. Everything still to come though is meaningless. Mm. Young people. It's wonderful to be young. Enjoy every minute of it. Do everything you want to do. Take it all in, but remember that you must give an account to God for everything that you do. So refuse to worry and keep your body healthy. But remember that youth, with a whole life before you is meaningless. Mm. And uh, that was, that hit me hard because like, I'm like, what if, what if this, that, and the other, what if this person says this about me because I went through this and that and the other, 
Like I'm, I'm sure there's people out there that don't believe in God and probably don't even care about the verse I just shared, but right. It's the principles I would say that would to that person, but I could have not shared that just now. And maybe it, it wouldn't have helped somebody, but like, that's the point I'm trying to get at is like with your mess being your message. Um, my mess in business once was like, I developed a crappy product. Right. When you said being good at what you do, I was really good at selling it, but I oversold something there and I had to take a, a year back. Hence right. hire a flipping coach yeah. <laughs> to help you navigate well, that. And also I just learned, I just learned that, you know, if I'm going to have someone buy something from me, I want to be sure the product is good. The customer service is good. Do it a couple of times and then start scaling things up. Um, but also, yeah. I mean, core values. Do you have integrity? And do you, are you going to do the things that you're going to say that you're going to do? Are you going to be on time? You know, um, anyways, I go for days on different values, but no, it, yeah. the idea of, I think when you're trying to, in this case, your message, your message, mm -hmm. you went through the action and it gave you a path to getting to where you need to go. Yeah. And I feel like that's what you really help people out with at the end of the day at top paid speaker. 100%. Well, here, this is the thing. Let's end, let's end this episode on this end. Let's talk about storytelling for the win to finish this up. And let's like okay. really do, okay. just, let's like really do what justice to what your message, your message is. The point of your message, your message is that if I had shared the darkness with me, maybe it would have saved Dustin's life. Okay. So what I'm talking about, the message, your message, that thing in your life that you don't want anybody to know about, or you really don't want to talk about, that's the brand origin story and what of your message, your message, that thing that you don't want to talk about. That you're sure if you talk about it, you're going to lose customers. That thing. Okay, so that's what your message, your message is. So I was so ashamed and embarrassed to talk about my attempted suicide. I never said anything about it. So when I launched my brand, that was the first thing I decided to talk about. So now the way that I reference it is in a world where everybody's sitting down, really timid and scared, kind of looking around the room, hypothetically, for somebody to do something. Just be the dude or the girl that goes, you know what? I'll go first. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Marshall Gillen, and uh, this is my story. And so I liken it to Eight Mile. At the very end, okay. Eminem. Okay. Eminem, he's like, he's like. <clears throat> so where I come from, everybody used to give me a lot of crap for the way that I am and trying to make money online. And they would tease. I mean, my best friends growing up, even into my early twenties, you know, they would talk so much crap about me. Now they all hate their life, and they're married to people, and they're trapped in businesses and jobs and things they hate. So whatever, God bless them. No, I don't mean that. I pray for them, honestly. But, I know um, what you mean, bro. You're fine. Yeah. You're fine. We're, but, we got um, I promise but, you won't yeah, yeah. you. I promise. <laughs> yeah, right? But, um, and so I, um, that was the story. Is I, I, I was like, you know what? All of you guys are going to talk shit about me. So I'm just going to do it myself. I'm just going to take away every single, every single weapon you have used against me. I'm just going to say it myself. And as long as I show up every day and I'm the dude doing his job and I have nothing to hide, none of y'all can say nothing to me. Cause what are you doing? That's like, that was the premise of it. So when I say now your message, your message, like for example, like again, I'll just end it with this. At the time of recording this, uh, anybody that follows me and watches me, if you're seeing this, I'm in this weird room right now. That's because my girl and I are like not in a good spot. If we're on the rocks and I'm not going to share the details of it because it's I'm in the middle of it. But I will tell you that some of the choices that I've made as a man have not panned out. And that has left my family at times vulnerable and, ex and exposed. And I promised my girl that I would always handle the business. And at times, and this is the story that I'm not going to share because it's not my part to share, but there's been circumstances and things that have happened in my relationship that have not been favorable enough for me to handle, get certain things handled. And um, our inability to both accept accountability for what it is that we've created has led this separation. It sucks. We've been together for three years. We're engaged. The boys are my boys. Like they, they don't have a dad, like this whole thing. And so I'm only telling you guys this to tell you at the end of this interview that like, I've been crying on and off like for the last few days. I just drove across Montana, you know, 26 hours. Uh, my sister had to come pick me up because my car broke down. I was supposed to do an interview, this interview with Kyle a week ago. And I just want to share that with you guys to say that like, I don't know what the plan is God has for me. I just got very clear on what my mission was years ago. And so if you work with me ever, my clients know the very, you get, you get 13 questions I send you right off the bat. And the first question is, what mission are you, what's your mission for life? Now, the reason this is so important is because if life is like an ocean, sometimes the waters are still and calm and the sun is shining. And sometimes it's storming and the swells are so high, you don't know which direction you're going. And so your mission needs to serve as the North Star. 
Because as long as you have a North Star, you'll always know what your purpose and what direction you're heading in is. The second question I ask them is, what are your core values? And then I take them through an exercise to determine what their core values are. The way that I teach core values, I really teach them as a list of non-negotiables. So oh, if, an if, an if an opportunity comes to you and it doesn't align with every single one of your core values, then those are my non-negotiables and I pass. Okay, so the reason I'm telling you guys all of this is because my mission in life is to save a billion lives. It's really to save a billion lives with the power of vulnerability and storytelling. And I know that what I've been going through, I've been isolating and hiding for the last six months. Like, if I'm being honest, like, I want to ask for help on how to handle this stuff. And I'm, I'm emotional right now because it's my story. But it's like, um, I should have asked for help months ago from like a men's coach or somebody that could have helped me understand how to be a business owner and how to be a father and how to be a partner. But I didn't. I just did what I always do, which is try to handle it on my own, which is what most men do. And so am I great at speaking? Yes. Am I making great money? Yes. Am I impacting the lives and saving lives? Yes. But in the, in the process and pursuit of that, I have lost my family and it is dangling by a thread. And I'm not telling you this to make you feel bad for me. I'm telling you the power of your message. Your message is that if you're a man listening to this and you know you need help, bro, I am, I am pleading with you. Figure it out before it's too late. Now, me sharing this with you. If you want to get paid to speak, do you feel more likely or less likely to want to work with me? And the answer is, and it's not manipulative, I'm just being honest, but this is really my feelings. The answer is you're more called to want to work with me now because you know that I'm real and you know that I'm not pretending to be somebody I'm not. And so if you are struggling in your life or your business and you truly want to help impact lives, you have got to learn how to persuasively and powerfully share your story with vulnerability because it has the power to save lives. And so I'll end with this. There's two things I believe in. I believe that everybody has a story and I believe that your ability to tell that story can not only save and change your life, but it can save and change the lives of people that hear it. And so that's what your message, your message has always been predicated on. And I hope that this podcast helps somebody understand that your story can, you know, has the impact to change your life. Bro, that was beautiful. That was <laughs> absolutely beautiful. And that's literally in the name, the true you unfiltered podcast. Like that's why we have the, <clears throat> That's that's exactly what my audience needs. Good. It's it's well, so good. Man. And guys, like that's that takes some big cojones. That's that's what I'll say <laughs> right there. Um, I I went ahead and I did a um, I did Marshall here a favor. Actually, I um, I went ahead and popped open actually a couple of his just pages real quick so you all can kind of find him, but. I'm going to uh, pop it open. I had it on my, my uh, Safari, but yeah. it's not. And on here, it's kind of weird. So I'm going to pop it open here on Instagram and and uh, Facebook a little bit. But so that way you all can find them too. We'll be able to put links in there and all that stuff. But uh, I know, I know um, a lot of times uh, there's a lot of uh, – on the internet, there's a lot of different profiles and things of that nature. You don't know who's real and who isn't real. So – I'm going to go and just uh, share a couple here. We got this beautiful man right here on, oh, on the oh. IG, baby. I have my and, man still. Oh, I know it. I know. It. I'm just jealous. Cause I, can't it. Talk, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, uh, I'm looking for that, that, uh, that, that, um, that shirt, uh, the, the live uh, oh, shirt. You, you won't oh. see it now. It was years ago. Yeah. yeah. I, I've, I'm fortunate. I, I should go back to it now, honestly, but my Let brand is like grown to, see to, to, a, to a, Oh no no no! Guess what? Guess what, man? Guess what? I know where I, I know where I know exactly where I'm gonna find it. This is him right here. I want to see the C profile picture and guess what, guys? Because I was looking for a good. You're little gonna go have to back a little bit, but yeah, I'm going, going. I'm going there, guys. This is going, yeah, him. almost there. Oh, nice! I need that cartoon. Boom, America! Oh, yes, it should be, it should be. there it is. This is what I remember. No, that's no, do you? Uh, I, that's not the picture. Right there. Boom. Right there. This is the shirt, right? That's yeah, me. Buddy. Yep. That's yeah. me. That was my profile picture for like five years. I love <laughs> it. So guys, find him on Facebook or Instagram. Go to his site. And then so you can get started on those questions. So that way you can find out what your non-negotiables are and your North Star. And so sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and just stop sharing for a second. I'll let you all find him on the social media. Get hooked up with him. Guys, your message is your message. Don't hide from it. Embrace it. Learn, adapt, execute, overcome. Thank you so much, Marshall. And we'll see you all on the next one. Thanks, brother, man. Mm -hmm.